Well, the property is the uh, closed air base up in Port Austin, mm -hmm. and uh, we're interested in primarily in the barracks and uh, the housing part of it. And uh, our intentions are to um, re redo it, uh, upgrade it, uh, make it into living quarters for potential uh, employees that we plan on bringing in from Puerto Rico. Part of its necessity, uh, we need employees. Uh, we're currently um, bringing, there's uh, two buses three days a week, or three, two buses three times a day bringing employees in from Saginaw. And we're trying to build our workforce and uh, it's a struggle. And uh, uh, this was something that was brought up by one of our customers. They said that other places have been successful with it, extremely successful, and that we ought to look into it. So we did. And uh, we found a uh, recruiter that recruits uh, employees from Puerto Rico. And uh, they have a person here and over there. And so they're going to help us to test the water. And the plan is to bring in probably about 20 and then uh, see how that goes. And there's there's challenges. Um, they said about 20% speak English, so uh, what percentage that we get, but that is a barrier. Mm -hmm. And uh, we will probably, we will have to have people here that can translate because there's a lot of, they, they've got to know what they're doing. And uh, so we're going to test the water. Mm -hmm. And uh, hopefully we're successful. And as as we go on, we'll start out with one barracks, and then we'll remodel that, and then go to the second one, the third one, the fourth one, and, and uh, try to build a workforce. And some will want to transition back and forth. Some may want to stay. And what we've got to do is have accommodations that's flexible, that uh, can handle either or, mm -hmm. and uh, that's. That's one of the challenges. They're American citizens, and they're screened, they're drug tested, and uh, so our intentions are to bring in good quality, solid, uh, law-abiding people. Uh, we want to keep them, uh, at least to start out with, in a in a group because of the communications and the the um, um, the barriers that they're going to have. Uh, coming into a strange, strange uh, place. Um, other companies have done it, and like I said, they've been successful. But uh, we've got to make it as comfortable as we can for them because we do want them to to stay. We think that uh, the people in the county are um, diverse enough mm -hmm. that uh, they should accept these people. Uh, we're told they're Catholic, so. The Catholic Church there is probably, <laughs> probably going to see a boom, mm -hmm. and uh, there's uh, we pay well, and so for the community, you know they've they've said that uh, the allegations are that it's going to put a drain on them. That's not so. Mm -hmm. you know, there's money going to be pumped into it. Mm -hmm. uh, the school, uh, if there's kids come, uh, this uh, property that we're buying has got a playground, mm -hmm. so if they do bring their families, and they've got something to do mm -hmm. and uh, we think it's a pretty good fit. I see a lot of positives but I do understand mm -hmm. the the concerns that they might have and that well obviously that they do have mm -hmm. and I've heard from different people there that uh, it's not that much rejected that uh, you know they're not that much against it mm -hmm. and uh, we just have to see how it goes but uh, you know, other communities have done it. It isn't like we're bringing in uh, uh, migrant workers or anything like that. They don't have to have anything real special for them to stay in. Mm -hmm. That uh, you know, if they got a, a bed and and uh, living accommodations, it'll be a lot better than what they've got down there. Mm -hmm. But so so as we've been told, that's not the case. Huh? When we bring them in, we've got to have a good place for them to stay, a comfortable place, and uh, it's not a case where give them a bed and a roof and they're going to be happy because they said that's not the way it works. It'll be more like apartments than a, a barracks. Uh, that's what I envision anyway. And uh, But each each group or each unit is going to have to have a kitchen and 
the, it isn't quite set up like that, and uh, that's going to have to be done. Mm. And uh, it's got an upstairs and a downstairs. And we can probably get a minimum of 10, possibly 20 people in a barracks mm. or in, in those living quarters. That's, uh, that's kind of what I think. There'll have to be some walls moved to make some of the rooms bigger. Um, there'll have to be plumbing done and, uh, and so on and so forth. Um, there's a fair amount of work, but you've got the structure and uh, we've had an engineer go up there and look at it. He says it's, it's pretty good, it's pretty solid. So we can do the, the modifications that need to be done to, to make them good rooms. A lot of it, there's a lot of small rooms, mm -hmm. and uh, there's, a, there's one of them that's got some big rooms that's been reworked, but uh, needs to be spruced up, at a, you know, the, the carpeting and the walls and stuff like that, you know, that's all got to be redone. Hiring at $15 an hour. <laughs> So nice. it's, that's a good wage. On top of that, uh, they can make up to 17 through the incentives. Mm -hmm. And on top of that, uh, there's bonuses that are paid for efficiency. We, we need about 200 people. And whether those, where they come from, uh, I'm not that concerned. Uh, the main thing is that I am concerned. I want American, uh, I don't want to uh, make a, a sanctuary city or something like that, you know. Mm. But uh, uh, that that's what we're trying to build is a is a good workforce and um, we're gonna we're gonna do it.